and welcome to day six of self-isolation. I'm not explaining the dog's breakfast anymore, I'm sure you've got it. Penny was straight in eating it this morning, so I was quite happy about that. Today, uh, Trigger's got a tin of applause that's in jelly, I'm not sure if he's going to like it. It looked kind of weird, but I mean, I guess it looks fine. <laughs> he probably won't eat it, he's a bit funny about his food. So I had a cup of tea this morning instead of coffee, and... I had some of the chocolate bread that I made last night and it turned out really nice. It's kind of like a brioche style thing. So I had a slice of that and I put some Nutella on it because it wasn't quite chocolatey nor sweet enough for me. I needed some sugar this morning. So I had some of that and I just toasted it. And then we're in the car because we needed to get some things from town and Josh can't drive so I'm the only one that can drive. So I drove us into town and I sat and waited and we masked up and had gloves and anti back and everything when Josh got back in the car. Uh, we took the dogs with us, and Zebby is there too, but Penny spent the whole time pacing and crying because she's badly behaved in the car and Zebby is brilliant. Going into town really gave me bad anxiety and was really messing up with my mental health, so the day kind of took a downturn from this point. My PTSD kicked off massively, along with my anxiety, and there was a lot of crying and everything, shouting and everything like that, and not fun, so I was already really worn out by the end of it. I had a nap and the day kind of was gone so I did what my mum taught me to do on bad days is you make things so I started off with the dog's dinner um, some sweet potato for Penny and then I'm cooking her a chicken breast again just to make sure that her tummy is really settled after being ill the other day you can for Trico guess what he didn't eat the jelly one but no big spray um, no big surprise there so I'm just wanting out his dinner and then Abra's going to have some carrot and Penny's going to have some carrot too. On days like this I get really quite bumble fingers and clumsy after a PTSD episode so I'm quite uncoordinated. It really takes me out, it out on me and I'm really quite dissociated for the rest of the day. It's not good. So I'm just chopping up some um, spring greens for Abra. And Zebby's getting the leftover veg from last night's dinner, which you can see I burnt quite badly. And I'm just mashing up a can with it. He can have leftovers and things like that. I, Penny, I have to control it a lot more. So I'm just going to mash it up as per normal. The whole thing with self-isolation has been really freaking me out. Um, I'm very anx anxious to even like go to the beach, whereas I am now. I am currently at this point allowed to go out. I'm not wanting to. It's truly scary out there and anyone else with health problems understands it. So I'm feeling a lot safer at home with my animals. There's Penny having some olive oil with hers and then cooked chicken and sweet potato. I'm just going to stir it about and break it up a bit for her. It overall wasn't an amazing day so I was feeling pretty pretty pooped out and I think from the video you can see that I'm quite lethargic and struggling to move about. So for me, what I wanted for dinner was macaroni cheese. So I'm going to make myself some macaroni cheese from scratch, which first involves grating some cheese, which meant I could have little snacks of all the bits that fell off. And I add cauliflower to my macaroni cheese so that it's the two greatest meals in the world, which is cauliflower cheese and macaroni cheese. So I'm just going to break apart the florets and then I'll chop it up a little bit. Uh, the top of my cauliflower was not ripe, so I didn't want that bit, there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, I broke it up and then I gave it to Penny because she loves cauliflower and she will go off and she will munch that and she will react the same way if you give her a bone to if you give her a piece of cauliflower because she's a weird dog like that. Equally with Brussels sprouts or carrots, she'll react that way. She just she likes vegetables. Zebedee will act like you tried to poison him. Like, he would probably react better to rat poison than he would to a vegetable. So, but that's just how Zebby is. So I'm just trying to chop up the cauliflower a little bit to make sure that it cooks at the same speed as the pasta because I'm trying to do, if not one pot, a two pot meal. Uh, Josh doesn't like cauliflower. Um, he's having something else for dinner. It wasn't a good day. I'll just say that. In general it just wasn't a good day. So I'm adding the pasta in and I'm going to leave that to cook and while it's cooking I'm going to make my pasta sauce. So 
it's basic fish smell so you melt down butter and then what well, you melt down butter it's still working <laughs> and then you add plain flour to it and you need to kind of eyeball it you need to make it into a paste so you may need to add more butter or more flour to get it to this point and then to the paste you add milk and you keep adding milk and you keep stirring it until you get a nice thick smooth sauce like this and you can add your cheese and then you need to stir your cheese in until it's all smooth again you might need to add more milk because the cheese will thicken up and then you should have a nice thick cheese sauce like this and I always add a bit of Dijon mustard to mine and give that a good stir in and then you just need to drain your pasta and tip it in and stir it all about and that's how I make macaroni cheese which is not at all what normal macaroni cheese is because it's not even macaroni I had because the pasta is still in a shortage here in the UK so after I had my dinner which was delicious I continued with my mum's motto of you need to keep busy you need to make something busy hands quiet the mind so I'm going to use these leftover clementines we have and I'm going to make some jam my new bread maker has a setting for jam so I'm going to try and do it that way never made jam in a bread maker before so I'm just peeling the, um, the tangerines and breaking them up they haven't got pips in them but I'm trying to take out as anything that I don't think is going to be good so I'm going to break up the fruit and pop it in and then I need to chop up the peel um, finely so it's kind of like a marmalade and then that's going to get added I've always made jam with my mum so making jam is something that's quite comforting to me and something I know how to do so it was quite enjoyable doing it especially after the day I'd had generally my mental health is a little bit up and down and additional stress and anxiety doesn't help and everything that's going on in the world I imagine anyone that has any mental health issues is struggling currently so I just popped it in there, set it onto the jam setting and let it do its job I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work uh, but I did obviously I added jam sugar and I added some liquid pectin because you need it to make it become jam otherwise it's just going to be um, cooked fruit so I added that it's quite interested by how it's going to go on as you can see by me staring but it seems to be going well Oz, it smelled great immediately so that's what it looked like at first and it's breaking up all the satsumas and then that's what it looked like after about 20 minutes when it had broken everything down so I needed to disinfect the glass jars I wasn't sure how many um, jars I was going to need because it didn't seem like a very large amount so I did the four I had and I made myself a piece of toasted strawberry jam because you've got to look after yourself even when you're not feeling good so because my jars have been sitting around I filled them with boiling water first just to make sure that they were all rinsed out and sterilised like that and I was making myself a cup of tea as well so and then I emptied out the jars and I put them in the oven for about 10 minutes to sterilise them further you need to do this as it helps make the seal when you put the hot jam in so I just finished making my tea uh, from, I like it when we manage to get milk in a glass bottle it comes from a local dairy, it's really nice so the jars are all sterilised and they're lethally hot so if you're doing this really be careful I'm moving it with tongs, do not touch it with your fingers please, don't, don't scald yourself and then I'm adding my bread maker tangerine jam in it smelled amazing and it actually set, which I was really impressed by I wasn't sure if it was going to one of the jars didn't um, seal properly so that one's been in the fridge but it will be fine and the other one did so I put it in my cupboard which I was, re I was really pleased with it and it was only productive and management that I ended the day feeling like I'd accomplished something rather than being tortured by my brain all day and Penny is wondering what I'm doing and why I'm not giving her biscuits you can just see her eyebrows in the corner <laughs> so didn't want to waste a single drop of it it's an amazing colour I really love the colour of it and then pop the lids on you obviously want to screw them on tight 
but use oven gloves to do that. And then I went with my piece of toast and my cup of tea and went and sat at the computer and did some uni work and I managed to complete the assignment that I was working on yesterday. So it all put together it became a rather productive day in the end. So that was my day six. It wasn't a great day. It was a day for the mental strife and it yeah, it wasn't good. But I will see you tomorrow for day seven. And I'm going through this slowly. Day seven now means that I only have eleven weeks of self isolation left. And I can just about do it, I think. There'll be good days and there'll be bad days as normal. So I'll see you for day seven. Goodbye.